Uh, good evening to one and all. Uh, at the outset, I, I like the All India Ophthalmic Society. Uh, Professor Namrata Sharma, they have been doing a wonderful job since last six months of lockdown. Uh, greetings to my co-speakers, uh, Dr. Gopal Raju and Dr. Saurabh Chaudhary. Uh, the topic today uh, is my take on presbyopia correcting IUL, its optics and its clinical implications. Uh, my journey uh, with a diffractive multifocal IUL started in 2005 and it is decade and a half and probably this uh, today's 20 minutes is a, in a nutshell of what I have experienced in the last 15 years. We'll start with the basics. We all know that uh, any kind of diffractive multifocal IUL is nothing else but uh, trying to inculcate a sequential diffractive optical steps, also known as kinoform, on a monofocal design. The actual size of the steps being just in few microns. The width of the step is what is going to determine the addition of the uh, diffractive uh, multifocal IUL and the height of the step is what is going to determine the light energy distribution. So the narrower the width, the higher would be the addition and the higher the heights, the more light would be uh, diffracted for the near vision. One more terminology which is uh, important to understand is echodization. This is nothing else but slow progressive decrease in the height of the step, thereby making sure that uh, while in photopic and mesopic conditions when the pupil is dilated, more light energy is distributed for distance. And this also helps in decreasing the visual uh, dysphotopia. So going to the uh, primary basic bifocal IUL, which is of diffractive design, you have uh, versions at zeroth order and first order. The zeroth order would be uh, about 40% light, which is non-deviated and it is basically dedicated for distance vision. Uh, the 40th percent remaining light for the first order is deviated for the near vision. What is more important is 20% of the light is lost. This is what we are concentrating when we are going to the trifocal IUL. So important because this is a light which is going to cause visual disturbance. In 2005, when we started, it was a high-ed restore. Then it came down to the low-ed restore, plus three. Uh, excellent IULs for distance and near vision. However, there was a compromised intermediate vision, which came to four with an era of digitalization, with the need of working on your iPad, your Kindle, your computer, as well as driving with navigation on. Uh, the need of intermediate vision increased. Industry answered. And then you had low ed multifocals like the Alcon Active Focus and the path breaking technology, which is the extended depth of focus IUL. This is nothing else but instead of a point focus of light, the range of vision is increased and so is the depth of focus. So, right from intermediate vision till near distance, the whole uh, depth of focus is increased. However, uh, they give better contrast than traditional bifocals, excellent intermediate vision, uh, less nighttime photic phenomenon, but they are still present. The catch here was that uh, the near vision was a bit compromised and patient needed plus one to 1 1.5 diopter aids while they were trying to read up close. So we had either one option giving good intermediate vision or another option giving good near vision. We tried to do our best by doing blended vision where we combined a high head and a low head multifocal. Or what we did was we implanted EDOF in one eye and a, a conventional bifocal lens in the another eye or a bilateral EDOF with a micro mono vision. In all these conditions, if you look at monocular vision, there was a gap either in the near vision or intermediate vision, which was still persisting. So people had to combine the two lenses to give a very good range of vision, but patients uh, needed best of both old and new. They wanted to do their professional work as well as their recreational work and also follow their hobbies and all of them without the need of glasses if possible. So they say that necessity is the mother of, mother of all new discoveries and that's what happened in 2010. PZIOL came out with fine vision in 2010. Incidentally, it is the same year with Apple, when Apple came out with its first iPad. So uh, a, a, a watershed zone. Uh, 2012 was when Carl Zeiss came out with its ATLISA platform. These are the first generation uh, trifocal IULs. They worked on the principle of sequential diffractive optics, where the, if the uh, first focal point was at 40 centimeters, the second would be exactly double 
to that which is at 80 cm now this is because of the restraints of physics where we cannot meddle with the focal length of the iul in case of a uh, sequential diffractive optic uh, fine vision was a hydrophilic iul uh, they have now come out with a hydrophobic iul where the light energy distribution is 49% for distance 18 for uh, intermediate and the remaining for near it is is again a very good lens but a plate haptic lens again a hydrophilic design where the light energy distribution is 50 20 and 30 now to me hydrophilic material uh, has its own limitation as far as the biocompatibility is concerned and so has the plate haptic design as well as the rate of posterior capsular opacification so we were doing wonderfully well with the patients with this iul but something was missing that wow factor was missing and that is what we were looking at. Uh, in last six months, probably this has come to four. Everybody in their OPD are seeing school children and even younger adults with computer vision syndromes and dry eyes. And multiple studies have shown that the ideal distance to work at intermediate vision is at 60 centimeter rather than the 80 centimeter with the traditional uh, first generation trifocal. So there was a, there was a need of an IUL which gave very good intermediate vision at 30, 60 centimeters. However, if we go by the principle, then the near vision would be at 30. And uh, Alcon answered the call by introducing the panoptics, uh, what I call as my go-to IUL uh, or trifocal IUL today. And we have several reasons to uh, explain that. The design itself has been tweaked and it is the optics itself uh, which is scoring over the traditional trifocal IUL. Uh, the material is the same time tested uh, as well as uh, the simple changes in the optics has worked wonderfully well. The diffractive zone uh, which has increased from a restore of having 3.6 to a 4.5 millimeter. There are two additional powers for intermediate vision and near vision which is working very well at 60 centimeter and 40 centimeter. But probably I would be contradicting my own statement because I was talking about sequential diffractive optic where an IUL would be working at 30 and 60. But they have worked out a principle of non-sequential diffractive optic and it is a quadrifocal IUL. So what they have done is they have an IUL which has four focal points. Uh, so if you take the first focal point as uh, x, the second has to be 3 and uh, three by 2 times x, which is at 60 centimeter, and the third has to be 3 times the x, which is at 120 centimeter, while the fourth being for the distance. Now here the light energy distribution would be equally distributed at all four points. That is, you have 25% light for near, 25% for intermediate, 25% for far intermediate, and 25 centimeter for 25% uh, is for distance but then the distance vision would be compromised. So they did something unique, what they call as an enlightened technology. What they did is they knocked off or chopped off the far intermediate one at 120 centimeter. And so what we have now is essentially a trifocal IUL with three focal points at 40 centimeter, 60 centimeter, and for the distance. And the light energy distribution being 50% for distance, 25% for intermediate, and 25% for near. Now, does this really work? Let us see it theoretically. Uh, the depth of focus or the uh, defocus curve is what gives us a theoretical idea. If you look at this, it is very obvious that the vision of 20 by 25 or 20 by 20 is achieved at all distances, right from distance at zero diopter till intermediate vision at about 1.5 to 2 diopter and for near vision. So this is something wonderful, which is uh, evident by, uh, uh, by the defocus curve. Uh, if you look at the Indian population, the average height uh, is about five feet, five inches. Now, if you look at the arm span of these people, it is going to be maximum around 60 to 65 inches and that, uh, centimeter. And this is the ideal place where people like to work. It is not only computer. When you are trying to apply your makeup uh, by seeing in the mirror or while you are shaving, while you are trying to read labels uh, when you are in a supermarket, while you are trying to drive when you are trying to see your dashboard or your navigation system. All this is where this IUL scores absolutely wonderfully. So again, highlighting the defocus curve, if you compare with the other trifocals, 
there are no peaks and troughs it is a very nice plateau which is maintained right from the distance to the intermediate to the near vision which is wonderful and that is what we wanted this is something again unique uh, 88% of the total incident light at 3 mm pupil site is utilized now we talked about 20% light being wasted in case of a traditional bifocal it has come down by about 7 to 8% and essentially this is what is contributing to uh, less than what uh, what we expected about the visual disturbances or dyscortopsia frankly speaking when the company came to us uh, with the iol they said that this is a non apodize optic plus there are increase in the number of rings so we had apprehension that there is no way this iol is going to work as far as dyscortopsia is concerned but they have done wonderfully well they have increased the diffractive size uh, area of the diffractive rings and more importantly about 88% of the incident light is utilized so it is only the 12% of the remaining light which is causing this dyscortopsia and especially the halo propensity is compared to uh, a bifocal or a restore iol uh, you can see with other iols also so trifocal iols are not that bad as far as the uh, visual dyscortopsia are, are concerned and panoptics is scoring really high on this also moreover because of the increase in the diffractive area it has become less pupil dependent and this also provides great contrast sensitivity as compared to a bifocal iol and it is not uh, the loss of contrast is not that clinically significant when you compare to a monofocal iol this is both in photopic and scotopic conditions and without without glare so this is again important especially when, uh, with the active lifestyle today people are living and trying to drive in mesopic and scotopic conditions this is something which is again helping uh, i had my own uh, 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 shortcomings as far as restore is concerned when we were trying to uh, make people read especially in mesopic light because suppose you are trying to go to a restaurant and trying to read a menu now in those mesopic light reading up close was difficult but here that problem also has been solved beyond an extent so you have a diffractive area of 4.6 mm so even in mesopic condition when the pupil dilates till 4.6 mm the near vision would be absolutely wonderful and then in really dark conditions when you are driving at night when your pupil would be about 5 mm or more the peripheral refractive part comes into picture and that gives very good distance vision so kind of pupil dependence but pupil independence or you can say it is tailor made for the size of the pupil and the visual requirement so this is again what is important these are fta data of the daily studies and a questionnaire was prepared prepared by the national eye institute uh, and uh, depending upon the difficulty various activities were graded and on most of them the iol scored absolutely wonderfully this is again important uh, the central side bull's eye has increased from about 0.8 or 0.9 to 1.16 now this has allowed us to uh, implant this iol into people with higher angle alpha and kappa as compared to a traditional bifocal so again the red flagging depending upon the angle alpha and kappa has gone down and the number of patients whom we can implant this iol as in uh, the primary concern will all type of diffractive iol is unsatisfied patients after surgery now if you look at those unsatisfied patients one third of them are due to residual refractive error and astigmatism is one of the major contributors and we all know that astigmatism correction is now a gold standard as far as refractive cataract surgery is concerned so this is the best platform for toric iol because it is on the time tested acrisoft platform it is a class leading uh, rotational stability so when you look at when you look at the uh, uh, visual performance of this iol because of the uh, rotational stability we are able to now correct people with uh, astigmatism on a higher side with the panetoric iol now when you combine all these features and compare with what you have i have no doubt in my mind to say that this is the next generation trifocal iol and if i have to close my eye and pick up one iol for my patients provided the eye is clinically suitable for a trifocal iol this would be the iol uh, 
this is my experience it is about more than 200 plus cases and if i have to put it in a single sentence this is what i will say if i do my job well i will deliver what the patient wants uh, and now because we don't uh, we don't worry about micro mono vision or a blended vision where we have to tell about the tell to the patient that your one eye would be seeing this better the other eye would be seeing this better and the patient would stop comparing there is less of share time and more patient satisfaction and that translates into the conviction which in which i am able to talk to my patient my counselor is able to talk to the patient which again will make sure that the patient is able to understand the technology and its limitation and take it in its stride uh, we drive home the message this is this is a slight compromise for a huge lifetime convenience which is important uh, we tested this iul in a very critically uh, 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 demanding patient he was a 49 year old male who was working as a deputy manager in qatar uh, the height of the gentleman was about 5 feet 6 inches a civil engineer he was supervising the development of an upcoming football uh, world cup as we all know he works on computer for about 4 to 5 hours reads books newspapers desk work also carries a kindle when he travels he drives to job day less at night but still sometimes has to drive recreation is playing golf and is a music lover he was so motivated to not to wear spectacles that he had uh, undergone lasik surgery in 1998 so this was a post refractive patient we make it made him understand the pros and cons of implanting a multifocal iul about the nighttime photic phenomenon and a need of bioptics also this is his pre op evaluation this is the iul master this is the same on a swept source ocd this is the online calculation done for both eyes. This is the true cap measurement by the anterior and posterior corneal power. And this is the online cal calculation with the one cap method. And these are his pre-op uh, data. The K readings, the lens thickness, ACD, Y2, Y, anterior corneal power, posterior corneal power, total power, endothelial count, and QQ value. The patient underwent uh, flex surgery. And this is the video of the same. I had attended a seminar on the same uh, similar topic where uh, the leading eye surgeons of India headed by Dr. Abhay Vasauda had uh, given their data about the panoptic IUL and it was encouraging. I had also heard uh, Dr. Jeevan Titial, the head at Ames, uh, talk about his uh, experience with the panoptic IUL and he had talked vastly about the stereo acuity as well as the mesopic and scotopic conditions also. And these data are really encouraging. There are multiple other studies online, the Cochrane study, where they have compared this IUL with the other uh, uh, first-generation uh, trifocal IUL. And most of the data suggests that with the advent of Pantoric, this is one IUL which will work wonderfully well, especially in Indian population with a slightly uh, short stature. So for me, this is something which is working very well. I'll just run through the video fast. This is the IUL. And these, uh, we implanted plus 16 and plus 17 diopter respectively in both eyes. This is a, this is a post-op result. And this is the post-op fit lamp photograph. This was uh, intraoperative and this is the post-operative. This is the magic of flex. If you see a very well-centered rectus around a very well-centered the optic uh, with a 360-degree uh, cover of the optic. So thank you for your kind attention and patient hearing. I would request Professor Nam